You are listening to KC Sports Network, the number one podcast network for today's Kansas City sports fans. With former players from your favorite teams, informed perspectives, and former insiders, this is the place for you. KC Sports Network is proudly presented by Emprise Bank, your partner in Possible. All right, folks, before we get going, we got to talk about Emprise Bank real quick. When was the last time you went into a bank? Now more than ever, who you're banking with is more important than where you're banking. Emprise Bank has been with us since the beginning as KCSN's partner, Impossible member, FDIC. Shout out, Emprise Bank. We are back, and we've got a big episode because breaking news just happened. We had a whole plan for this episode. We were going to talk Texas. We were going to talk K-State. But there's a bigger story here, boys. The story we've been waiting for for months. The biggest. It's happened. Lance has said no to Nebraska. He's signed an extension with Kansas. He's going to be here for a long time. And it's really, truly, I can't believe we made it. It felt like, I don't know, I felt like we were still kind of far away. I was stunned to see this news break. Uh, (laughs) B-turn. What a month, what a like, what, seven, eight month stretch for this this athletic program it's insane yeah national title in basketball the football team starts five and oh gets game day in town they're ranked we're obviously going to be going bowling after being winless two years ago Leipold we've said it for a year or so now he's actually one of the best coaches in the country and we've we said it on, on the pod like a month or so ago it would be KU's luck to get off to this start get this really good coach and then he has schools that people consider his dream job coming after him and we're obviously in the back of your mind you're scared you're going to lose him to one of those schools and you have to restart all over but now you get a coach that just turned a winless program into a bowl team less than two years they were ranked yeah. this year they've been competitive in most games besides the game that we don't need to talk about on this episode very much but I just tweeted it it's one of the biggest days in the history of KU football like it sounds crazy, is, but there, it sounds crazy, but it's not. <laughs> there hasn't been too many. Um, I mean, there hasn't been too many ups throughout the history of this program. Obviously, we played in a BCS bowl with Todd and Mangino was great, but this is one of the best coaches in the country. And you're terrified that a bigger school would have came and t- taken him away from Lawrence and he's here to stay. And literally one of the biggest days in the history of this um, program. And I couldn't be happier. AB, you're you're a big college football guy. What? Uh, so obviously now we know Lance is staying, not going anywhere. Where? Take me back to as B turn pointed out. Early in the season, it got stressful because you see the Nebraska job open in what week three, week four. Week yeah. later, Wisconsin <laughs> opens. Those are the two jobs that were always connected to Lance. You're a college football guy. Where were you at confidence level that we would actually see Lance back in Lawrence? Because I went back and forth. There were times where it was like common sense. It's like, well, of course, Nebraska or Wisconsin comes calling. We're still Kansas. He's picking up that phone. His agent wants him taking that call. He's going to go. And then you shift back. You hear him talk. You, you see how much his family loves Lawrence. And you start to get your hopes up that he's staying. Where Where were you at? Did you see this happening? I was all over the place. I th- Were you guys similar where, like, Right when they got fired, Nebraska and Wisconsin coaches got fired. It was like two weeks where his name was brought up every single time he was talked to. It was like, oh, well, what about these other jobs? Are you going oh, to these other the, jobs? The, the picture on every headline of yeah. a coaching search. like, oh. mm-hmm. And like for that <laughs> few week span, it was like terrifying. And then I felt like it really died down for like a month. And I don't know if that's just because we started losing games and weren't yeah. like the national – underdog story of the year so obviously less focus less talking about us um but i kind of just like forgot about it and thought okay he said everything i I believe him and then all of a sudden this week it popped up again that like oh matt rule may have said no to nebraska and wisconsin might not be hiring leonard and all this started coming out and i was like shit this is not a done deal at all so it was just a roller coaster over the last what two months i guess since frost got fired yeah, it's it's. I mean, it was literally two hours ago we were texting, or like Jane's texted in that group and said mm-hmm. Washington's coach signed. Didn't he sign an extension or what did yeah. he? I can't remember what he did. And then mm-hmm. we were talking about how Rule reportedly turned him down, and it was like you're starting to look at it, and you're like, well, if you cross him off, you cross him off, and if Lance wasn't their number one guy, now he might be. So mm-hmm. like there was a, it was literally three hours ago. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting there like, God, man. 
how's he going to say no to Nebraska? Like, is can he say no to Nebraska? And so it's just wild to think this is all over because I really did think this was something that could potentially extend another month or even after the season. It seemed unlikely, but I don't know. Um, do you think? And, do you think Nebraska yeah. made their decision? And it wasn't Lance and it wasn't Rule, but like both of these stories dropping on the same day kind of make me think, okay, well, at read... first we thought Rule said no, but then if Lance is signing an extension, he didn't get that job. Rule didn't get that job, so his name's out of it for whatever reason. I don't know if they've already I... hired a guy in their mind and they're waiting until after next week to announce it or what. I thought I saw, and I don't want to misinform this, I thought – Michael Swain at Fog or Twenty Four Seven Sports. I thought he posted that uh, he had heard Leipold actually said no to Nebraska late last week, and then oh, we okay. kind of ironed out. And so that would be awesome to think Lance was like no. And I'm, I mean, obviously, I'm sure the contract talks were very deep at that point, and he probably knew that they were getting to a place he was wanting to be. So it's pretty sweet if that's true to think that Lance told Nebraska no because he wanted to stay in Lawrence, Kansas. Like imagine saying two years ago that a Kansas football coach would say no to Nebraska football like that. And, you know, the crowd support this year, I think has helped a lot. I think you could tell Lance and especially like his wife, like they really appreciated how much love everyone showed the program. And I think that played a huge factor. Wouldn't you say, I mean, don't you think B turn? Yeah, yeah, and I'm just sitting here thinking about how loyal he is. Like, <clears throat> he sat with, in that Joel Klatt interview where Joel Klatt was actively telling him to stay in Lawrence, which is really cool. Yeah. And Lance just adamantly was saying how much they love Lawrence. They don't plan on going anywhere. They plan on staying. And I guess in the back of our minds, it just sounds like something a coach has to say in that moment, but truly feels like he believed that. And he they do love Lawrence, and they want to be here for a while, and they made that happen. Yeah, um, it's – what. What question did you just ask me? I just asked you, like, I wonder, had we not started five and zero, oh, and say we started like three and two, and if we started three and two, there would have been buzz, right? If we beat West Virginia or something, people still would have been like, "Man, Lance is killing it." But if we didn't have that five and zero oh start where we had sellout, and also I think the three back to back, the three straight home games helped us a lot too, because you get back to back to back sellouts. You get game day because of the 5-0 start. And I think that really showed Lance, like, oh, my. Like, if, I just, if we just win and we play well here, this crowd does care. Like, they don't, we don't hate yeah. football here. We've just had nothing to cheer about. No. Uh, and that's... So I think that really played to our advantage was being able to get that momentum early. Whereas if you go three and two, you might still be looking at, you know, 35,000 people in those games <laughs> because the hype's not quite there. You don't get game day. So it's kind of crazy to think about how everything came together. Yeah, and that's – our fans have just been hungry for a little success. Like you said, we were the worst power five in the country for a long time. It's like no fan base in the country is showing up to those games. Yeah. And like Lance said, after the Oklahoma game last year where we were competitive, we had a chance. Uh, Caleb Williams didn't do something miraculous and – Kind of, he turned to his wife and was like, "They're this happy after a loss." We've talked about this yeah. a loss a lot on here, but I'm sure he can. He's been. They've been getting so much love from our fans, and they can see how hungry we are to have a good foot, good football program here again, like we did with Mangino. And we got to give a huge shout out and a lot of credit to Travis Goff just for one getting him here. Like the coaching <laughs> yeah. search was yeah. incredible. I think the last two candidates were obviously Munkin and Leipold, and I don't think we could have went wrong with either. We made the right choice for sure, but just to get him here in the coaching search and him doing his due diligence and then now to just lock him up. Like they were relentless with that. They were not going to let him go anywhere. They locked him up. They obviously did a great job getting him to Lawrence in the first place. So we got to give a huge shout out just to the athletic department as a whole. And then yeah. Lance just for being loyal and seeing that you can obviously win here. They proved that this year. So I just I and cannot be happier, and I didn't I didn't expect this announcement to come tonight. I'm kind of in shock still. Obviously, we were all worried about him leaving at some point, but the th I mean, we've said it. How good could this team? We said it like a month ago. How good could this team not only be just next year with all the bodies returning, but how good could they be towards the yeah. end of his contract? Like, if this dude's yeah. winning eight or nine games a year, which might sound crazy, but we were at six this year. We were five and zero. Oh, we were competing. 
And they're winning, if they're winning eight, eight or nine games, why doesn't he stay here for a long time and maybe the rest of his career? Yeah, and I, I want to talk about the future with Lance now that we truly can, but I don't want to gloss over Travis Goff. I mean, you think about two years ago, Les Miles was our coach, Jeff Long was our AD, and to somehow come out of that disaster – with Travis Goff, who's like, I don't even, is Travis Goff like 40 years old? He's like 41 years old. I don't even know. The dude's in his dream job. He's so young. I don't see him leaving this job unless it's for like, I don't even know. Like, Where would he go? I don't know, become an NBA GM or something. Like, I don't even, there's no college job Travis Goff wants more than this job. Like, we've no. got him locked up now we need to keep paying like that dude deserves the next raise i don't know that <laughs> he's needs been to be tremendous done. i mean we'll, you think about what he's done he signed bill self to or lifetime. i guess yeah bill's been signed to a lifetime contract we've won a national title we've <laughs> hired lance leipold we've made a bowl game we've now what the the other big thing about the lance news is it pretty much solidifies that like what we're going to do with this stadium is going to be legit because Lance was not signing a contract if he didn't know that this stadium and this renovation and, and just everything about this program was going to be 100% all in. So I think that's another huge development. And that's Travis Goff again. Like, And then you think about NIL. I don't know how well we've done compared to other programs, but we're not doing bad. We're doing well. So that's I... Travis Goff too. Like he is just – awesome at his job and so i want to make sure that guy gets the love he deserves he should come on the pod someday um and yeah i don't talk. nil wise i'm not sure with football but i know for a fact ku hoops is doing extremely well this year yeah so yeah, yeah. you just got me juice they announced the renovations the same weekend as college game day like this it feel it doesn't even feel real the last eight or nine months yeah. like bill self gets a second natty they're going bowling I think they got a chance to be Big 12 title contenders and may I mean it sounds crazy but maybe next year or a couple of years from now I I think I don't see why we can't have our hopes up or be optimistic about Kansas being a bowl team every single year especially if they did it this quickly. I was so waiting to talk see about where you're going to go with that. I thought you were going to say like college football playoff contenders because you you kept going up like one more step and then I was like, boy oh boy. Boy okay, but AB AB I'm serious though like so We've got Lance. He he's got six wins. Probably gonna get six if we get a, if we win the bowl game seven. What is now? Now that we know we've got Lance, what is the expectation? Obviously, Oklahoma, you think Texas a bowl leading. game. Bowl games, the expectation next year again. I think. Um, yeah. But like, what do you what are you expecting out of Lance over these next five seasons? Are you? What I think it's great, and I don't think you're wrong, B turn with how the Big 12 is kind of changing, but I don't think it would be fair to say, like, well, Lance needs to compete for a Big 12 title in no. the next couple of years. I, I I don't, it'd be awesome. I just, I, I don't know, AB, where do you, where do you stand on that? I rem the day he got hired, I was listening to a podcast that said that if Lance, if the KU was patient with Lance, he would get us to like a consistent bowl team. And when everything came together, a team that can win eight, nine, maybe ten games, I don't think I want to like change those expectations. Yeah, because me that's I mean, if if I would have offered to do that six months ago, we would have taken it in less than a heartbeat. Like, so I think I'm gonna just, like stay level headed and think like if this is I wouldn't say this season would be like a floor, but if this is like an average season, that's kind of yeah. what I would expect going forward. Now, some recruiting cycles, you might have less and go four and eight. Some you might have more, maybe even next year's that year where we have every single player, like except for what, how many seniors do we have? There were 12 that were celebrated the other day. Yeah. Like we've got a lot of starters coming back. So maybe next year's that year that they compete for eight, nine games, maybe a big 12 championship, who knows? But I don't yeah, want to get yeah. too crazy yet because at the end I'm, of the day, it's still two and it's 10 gonna be and probably wild. six and six. It's going to be wild when we go like, yeah, six and six in three years or something after we lose some guys and the fan base like <laughs> is not happy with that. Like, it's going to be weird that that could potentially be a reality, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, like you said, next year's roster, it's going to be so exciting to think of what. I mean, I think next year, it'll be interesting to see what the over under on win total is. You got to think next year it'll be 
five and a six, half. five, five, five and, and a half. half. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And I'm not even saying I like we should expect to compete for big 12 titles. I'm just saying we had those conversations this year. Yeah. And I think if a couple games go different differently, maybe we are competing for one in Manhattan in the last game of the season. I mean, TCU, obviously, Baylor was tight. I think if we ended up beating Texas Tech, we would have had to win out, obviously. But um, Baylor ended up losing, so we would have been in there. I just, I'm just, i saying they have a shot. Oklahoma, Texas are leaving. A lot of new teams are coming in, some solid programs. But I'm just saying if he, t- if he can turn this program around that quickly in less than two years from winless to – starting five and oh almost six and oh and going bowling i think we should have our expectations super high i think they could compete in most games they did that this year texas obviously wasn't close but i just i have my hopes all the way up because if he did it this quickly how good could they be a couple years from now i know yeah that that's what's so exciting is lance everywhere he's been he's just consistently like continuously wins it's not like he has randomly incredible years and then kind of you know it's not like he's had these random fluke years and then his average again he just consistently builds teams and gets them better and better and better um now there's always the scary possibility of like (laughs) next year (laughs) no i think about like iowa state last year remember all the expectations campbell's and all the coaching you know, circles and and they return everybody from a team that was really good and they just completely laid an egg last year. Like that's kind of what's scary is what, and I don't even know why I'm bringing this up, but like, what if we went six and six next year? Are people, what if we went oh. five and seven? Like, I don't know. If people just, are mad at six and six next year. They need to go to like see a therapist yeah. or something. Cause that's, that's insane. Okay. I'm Be mad at six wins all... for KU. Yeah, I know. I'm in agreement. I just like it'll be interesting to see how the fan base mindset changes over time. Um, I mean, but- yeah. What are our expectations going to be going into next year? We talked a week or two ago about potentially being ranked in the preseason. So if you're ranked in the preseason, what are the expectations? You obviously expect to go bowling, but we've also talked about this is crazy. But what's the difference between being six and six and seven and five? Yeah, it's yeah. one more win, and it might get you to maybe a little bit better of a bowl game, but you're probably still not competing for a Big 12 title. So I don't know. I mean, you can't really expect eight, nine wins every year. You're going to be in a tough conference, and all the games are probably going to be tight late. We have a decently tough non-con. We have Illinois coming to Lawrence. That could be a loss. So I guess it suck. Illinois got really good too. Like that'll be a fun game, but it sucks that that's a tough game now. But you want to hit a break and uh, talk? Yeah, K-State, let, let's let's take a quick break. We'll talk a little more Lance expectations, K State, um, when we get back. All right. So we we obviously touched on Lance expectations, and I, and so I don't want to get too deep into like the next five, six, seven years. But it's absolutely incredible. This is the first time we can actually sit down as KU football fans and look out five, six, seven years with pretty good confidence that we're going to have a competent program. Whereas a lot of times you're in year two of Beatty and you're like, ah, well, this isn't going to work. When's he going to get fired? And then you're in year, you're, you're three of miles and you're like, yeah, this is most certainly not going to work. I'd, um, uh, I'd pay money to listen to our podcast after we beat Boston college. Oh my God. I bet we were like, we're back. Les was the best hire ever. Dude, we love no, the electric football game, though. Our offense, right? I mean, Khalil you and watch Puka. that team, you think that's one of the sickest college football teams in the country that year. And Carter yeah. was really good. And then I'm sure even after Tech, because yeah, we got our we got our hopes way up for that K State game in Lawrence. And I think yeah. we loved Jeff Long there for a little bit, and that was just a disaster. Oh. Well, it turned out Jeff Long just liked Twitter as much as all of us. He wasn't very good at being an athletic director, but he was a hell of a tweeter. Um, and so, you know, Jeff Long was really cool. And then you sat and started looking at his – it's like that coworker that's that's really fun to be around. But then you start, like, looking at their work and you're like, what's this guy actually do? Like, why why is he not doing anything? Uh, so, yeah, man, it's just wild that we have Travis Goff and we had Jeff Long. I will say, Jeff Long sliding down that pole, that video, all-timer. I you loved it. that thing. Oh, it was so funny. And that at the time of loving Jeff Long, he was just hilarious to see your AD just mixing it up on Twitter like that. So, uh, but man, yeah, we're in a we're in a great spot now. Um, 
but we got a we got a tough one coming up, boys. <laughs> um, this is not the vibe I wanted to have going into Manhattan. Not one bit. And if you think you just mentioned what, that, locking that up your coach for seven more years, that 2019. Well, that is good. That kind of helps with the vibe. <laughs> But you mentioned that 2019, we're coming off the Texas Tech win. We had almost beat Texas. Like, we had this extreme confidence. Now I'm going to, you know, I'm saying this, but as I'm saying it, I'm spin zoning a little bit here. Are we kind of flying in under the radar, boys? AB, are we? Or go ahead, V-Turn. Like, are we kind of sneaking up now? I mean, I've been saying for two weeks, they're going to have nothing to lose in Manhattan. Like, they're... Like I said, what's the difference between winning six, seven games, getting – we don't really have much to play for. They're bowling. They can go into Manhattan, be the spoiler. I don't have my hopes up for the matchup, but we definitely are probably flying under the radar. And like I said, they don't really have anything to lose going into Manhattan. They can just go in there, play free. And I think I said it last episode too. It's like K-State could have a little pressure on them. What if they come out a little tight and KU sticks around as a dog, builds some confidence – K-State has to win, obviously, to be in the Big 12 title. They lose, Texas wins, Texas is in. So, could be a little pressure on them. I personally think if they would have already locked up the Big 12 title game, that it would have been they would have been free, probably just gave it to us, shit-pumping. But, I, mean, I don't it really know. We have nothing like to it, lose. It's, it sets up for what would be one of the most devastating Kansas State football losses, regular season losses, probably ever, right? I mean, because <laughs> – to this have would lock spoil. up a BCS bowl for them if they beat KU. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, essentially. It, I mean, it's, 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 yeah. Sorry. It's kind of like I, I think I texted this to you, AB. Like it's kind of the best possible scenario besides us winning and going to the Big Twelve title game. That would have been the coolest way to win. But this kind of sets up like if we can find a way, find a way somehow. This kind of sets up to be like the most awesome way to finally break the streak of losing to k-state and it would be the way that would genuinely break twitter like i do not know we thought twitter was gonna die last week because of elon and, and that whole thing kuk state might be the thing that breaks twitter if ku wins that game we we've got to beat them while twitter's like existing i don't think we have since twitter launched so we've really got to do it before it closes I remember I'm such a psycho. I remember thinking KU's got to win a national title while Twitter at Twitter's at its peak because we didn't get to experience Twitter in 2008, and then we finally got it. It was, I mean, it wasn't that cool, but it was cool. KUK State <laughs> would live up to the hype. It would. I mean, this because, would be oh, if you win a national Manhattan tweeting the whole time. <laughs> yeah, K State fans will not be able to con- contain Anthony Bax on Twitter if we win this game, <laughs> and a national title and beating K State to expel them from the big 12 title game i can't yeah. think i really can't think of a better year it sounds makes it sound like it's our super bowl but yeah you haven't beat them since 2008 you can shit that that fan base would be devastated can you imagine the tears on twitter if ku found a way to go into manhattan win for the first time in 14 years or whatever it is and it knocks them out of a big 12 title game ex, uh appearance it, yeah no i can't imagine but i want to i want to see that happen <laughs> Um, we need like, Texas okay. to win on Friday, though, because if Texas loses, then, I know. like you said, Braden, we would get shit pumped because KC would already got? be in. Baylor, who looks like shit. Like, I guess they almost beat TCU. I was thinking of the K-State the game of, the other day. The Bananas. end of that TCU game was the most. But we were at Luis's West Insane. watching. I had no audio. We were just staring at the TV. We were like, what? what is going When they ran that ball on third down, I genuinely thought they forgot what down it was i gasped the fact that that was their plan insane that's the ballsiest move i've ever seen on a football field are we Um, getting sick of tcu they're not very hateable but it's like god dude they find ways man i want them to make the playoff they just find ways to win they've obviously had a good amount of luck go their way they've had some qbs go out but they just find ways to win somehow. I mean, Texas's offense couldn't even move the ball on them, so you got to give them credit for that game. Which I guess, touching on the KU Texas game, like yours doesn't look good at all. No, B. John just that job on I would have ran for two hundred yards on Saturday. So I mean, <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> so, Trying okay. to be looking like that old World War II vet running through. <laughs> yeah. But that does kind of have me worried Friday. 
I think Baylor Baylor's a weird team to me too. It's like they looked elite against us in the first half, 28-3, and we ended up coming back, had a chance to beat them. And then they don't score at all against K-State. They got pumped mm-hmm. by K-State in Waco, and then they were seconds away from beating TCU in Waco. So I don't, I can't get a read on them at all. I think they yeah. won in Norman also. Texas is a eight and a half point favorite, but Vegas just loves them so much. Their lines yeah. are always so inflated. So that was TCU. Yeah. That mm-hmm. that's what they were favored against TCU. What do you it's guys just, think about our line on Saturday? I think it's insane. It's way too low. I think. I yeah. I think. It, I mean, I don't want to be. What negative. is it at now? Twelve. Yeah, I saw thirteen, uh, but yeah. Oh, I thought I it was think eleven. It, I might be. I mean, I don't know either way. I just think K State wins by two touchdowns or more. I think this okay, matchup me, is terrible for us. Let me give you some dumb brain analysis, and then we'll get into the real oh, brain analysis. Brother. So here's the dumb brain analysis. Mm-hmm. Lance Leipold signs an extension. You know how like a team rallies around the interim coach <laughs> oh, that boy. gets the head job or something like that. You know, they always come out and they. They, they play good. They play good for their coach. They're now – they know Lance is committed full-time. We're, we're, we're back. Then on the other side of it, rules said no. Lance has said no. Washington Here coach has said no. Who's up? Where is the rumors going to be going? It's going to be Mr. Chris Kleiman, boys. <laughs> Mr. So, Chris. do the rumors <laughs> start to infiltrate Manhattan, Kansas this week? And come Saturday, do we have a fully – Bought in Kansas Jayhawk team and a and a K State <laughs> team doing some whispering. That's my dumb brain analysis. Thoughts. I like those thoughts. You've thought sure. this out all week, I think. So now here's the real analysis. I, I want to like you were going to give B turn. We can't stop the run. Like we, <laughs> we we can't stop the run. I don't know what we're gonna do. <laughs> yeah, I mean Texas was outrageous. Baylor was outrageous. Oklahoma was just Texas 10. Tech, who's not a good running yeah. team, was outrageous. Yeah, missed so many tackles against Texas Tech. Can't stop the run at all. I mean, against Texas, you knew what to do. Ewers wasn't killing you with his arm or anything. Just had to stack the box and stop Bijan, and he almost, he could have went for three or 400 yards if he really wanted to. So, yeah, K-State's really good in the trenches. Just like every year it feels like they got a bunch of monsters in their offensive line. I think they're just going to run it every play and – that's going to open things up for Will Howard, who looks really good. He's pretty good on his feet. He's good with his – he obviously can sling it. I think he should have been playing over Adrian, especially in the Texas game. And they could – their season could be completely different, which is crazy. Tulane, they lose in a tight one. They lose to Texas with the ball at midfield. Um, so they could have been maybe not a playoff contender, but they could be a one-loss team pretty easily. Um, like and I then said maybe, this last week, if I were a K-State fan, I'd be very frustrated that this yeah, and then, didn't have a true shot at making a playoff this year. And then because... TCU's that other loss where Will How- Adrian left, Will Howard left, Rubley came in for a little bit, so they easily could have beat TCU. They were up like two or three scores on them at one point. So they were 25 points, weren't they? It, it was, was like 28-3. 28-10, maybe I'm 28, 10, I think. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. But, yeah, their season could be different. They It just – it's felt like a – bad matchup for a long time now just thinking forward to that k-state game for a month or so now them running the ball and then will howard obviously can kill you with his arm and he's been he's been really damn good their defense is good too so feels like a game that maybe if we could move the ball and just kill some clock and try to make it close that'd be great but their defense is really good so that's i'm not sure i was gonna ask i i gave dumb brain analysis like what what is the – how do we win this game? Like, does it – you said slow it down, or do we just have to somehow revert back to, like, early season KU offense and just try and – I don't know. I don't – I mean, what do you guys think? I don't know what the recipe is to beat K-State. It just – if you just look at this as a football game and you look at both sides, you're like, I don't see, based on our weaknesses and their strengths – I, I, I'm having a really hard, as dumb as yeah. I can come up with scenarios, I'm having a really hard time. As a fan, you have to come up. up with those scenarios. Yeah. Like any We're gonna fan to, can do that. You're going to have to force like two turnovers, at least in my eyes, or win the turnover battle by at least one or two. Yeah. And then hope that Jalen has like, as Therese Paler RIP would say, over his dead body game and just yeah. play like 
300 yards passing, three touchdowns, 80 (laughs) yards rushing, another rushing touchdown. Like, I do think to win, we're gonna have to like just keep scoring, like speed it up, because they're yeah. If we slow, if we try and play slow, I don't. And that's like playing directly into what K State wants. Like get them out of their rhythm and make them score 40 points to beat us. Like if this is a 27-17 game going into the fourth quarter, obviously we're down 10, so we don't feel great. But say it's 21-17. I'm going to take K-State to win that every time. If it's 35-35 and we just keep matching scores and it's just whoever gets the ball last, at least you give yourself a chance. Yeah. You get Kotal Nicky in his bag a little bit. Yeah. That's what I want to see. Definitely was not I don't think that's going to happen, though. Texas, I'll tell you that. But also, yeah. I think getting J.D. some reps was huge. I think mm-hmm. he was he was clearly rusty, um, overthrew a couple guys, let a couple, let a couple throws get away from him. So I think some in-game reps will be helpful for him. And, I mean, we talked about it all year against Houston. Like, he would move the chains with his feet, just keep drives alive. So, if we could possess – I don't know. I mean, I feel like people don't give K-State's offense enough credit. Like, I feel like K-State's always known as a team that just pounds it and has a really good defense. But I think their offense is super explosive, and I just don't see how we can get a shootout with them, especially with how good their defense is. I just – I don't think we have really the weapons on the outside to beat them. Um, yeah. So I don't know. Just talking about it makes me – with you two makes me feel even worse than I did. So that's great. Mm-hmm. It's going to take – I mean, but, I will a, say this. They can Jaylen come out looked, tight. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and Jalen looked rusty. But I will say the thing about – I was obviously disappointed in how Jalen played. But the the things he were doing, it was clearly just a a – rusty lack of timing like you said be turned and needing reps like i think jalen's gonna be fine it was just a lot of kind of throws that were just a little off a little late a little i don't know so i'm not that worried about jalen but i also don't know if he's just gonna turn it figure it out in a week like i still think it's gonna take him a little bit but i saw lance said we had our best practice on a monday all year like he felt like the energy was great um and this is a little bit dumb brain analysis but not totally there's something about Lance Leipold that I just like I can't see him just getting absolutely boat raced and just just embarrassed two straight weeks in these types of games. Like I know at a certain point, talent versus talent, it may not matter, but I just kind of have a feeling we're gonna come out with a little different attitude, a little different um energy than we've maybe had the last few weeks. So because Texas Tech and Texas were really bad performances. And so, I don't know, maybe maybe it's just all a bad sign. But I just feel like Lance Leipold is too good of a football coach and has too much pride to let us go into Manhattan and just get absolutely smoked. Now, we could easily lose by 12, and that's <laughs> probably a decent showing. But I don't know. I just – I that's where I'm starting to a little bit talk myself into it is we're due for a good performance. It's been a while. Let's just find a way. Let's go. Let's go play even remotely close to how we played early and and compete. Make it fun. That's what I'm saying. I just want it to be a good game. I want it to be a competitive, fun Saturday night game on national national television, and somehow play spoiler going to Manhattan. Like I said, maybe they get tight. Ku makes us a close game, an underdog. You get their get their confidence high late, and they pull something off, pull something crazy <laughs> off. I don't know. I. K State could play tight. You never know, but it's a tough matchup for us. Can't stop the run, and I think they have a really good defense. So mm-hmm. obviously the matchup's super tough. But yeah, all right. Yeah. Let's let's take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll talk. We'll talk picks, and uh, we'll do a little college hoops talk as well. We are back. We're gonna do some picks here. We're gonna make our predictions for this weekend. Talk a little hoops predictions for hoops. Um, as always, shout out Emprise Bank. They have been with KCN, KCSN since the beginning. Uh, go check them out. They are they are a great partner. We appreciate them. But all right, on the picks, let's start with KUK State. We talked a little bit about it. The line sounding like twelve, AB K State minus twelve. Yeah, K State minus twelve. Uh, total sixty two and a half as of right now. Yeah, I'm gonna just start. I like I said. I think we I, – I do not think we roll over and let them just smoke us. I think we compete. Um, I will say we cover, and I will say 
final score 30 uh, 34 24 so what is that that's the under right that's 58 mm-hmm. so i'll take the under and hawks cover we'll compete that's what i think that's all i'm gonna say i uh i think k-state's gonna smoke us i don't think the game's gonna be close i'd hate the matchup i almost hate it more than i hated the texas matchup i think texas obviously one of the best defenses in the league and one of the best rushing attacks so it might be that might be a tougher matchup but i think they're pretty close i think k-state's gonna run it all over us it's gonna be tough for us to get any stops at all and then they obviously have a super solid defense so i'm thinking it's gonna be like a 38 17 game yeah. so not like a not a huge not a big time blowout but i do like the under i think ku may try to slow it down obviously i know ab you said maybe a little shootout and KU tries to just outscore them, but I think maybe we would have to slow it down for it to be a game. Maybe just move the chains, use Devin Neal. Yeah, I like the under, and I like K-State. I think K-State should be like 14 or more point favorite in this. AB. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to agree with Braden on the side at least. I just <clears> – <throat> I've been confident against K-State far too many times, and I told myself I wasn't <laughs> going to do it again oh. until I saw it. Um, I will say, though, like – it's going to happen someday, and that's, I like, know. the only hope I have. Um, but I just don't think that someday is this Saturday. I, I, I think it's going to be, like, 42-24 K-State. So, it just goes over. Yeah. And, uh, that's seemed, I, kinda, I feel like it's kind of a high no, – I don't know. It's kind of higher it's too, than I expected. It's two running teams mostly, yeah. or but, like, at the same time, they're both also pretty damn explosive. Like, there's going to be 50 yeah. yard touchdown runs this game by someone. Um, what would make you guys happy? Like, what outcome would make you guys happy? Obviously, winning, but. I just want to sh- see us somewhat playing like we did early in the year. Like, I want to have hope going into a bowl game that, like, it would be really kind of, it would be very disappointing to get smoked against k-state and then like have a bad showing in the bowl game like then all of a sudden those expectations you talk about mm-hmm. going into next year you're not preseason ranked you're all of a sudden people are saying well were they really good early in the year or was it just like and obviously we were but like people would come up with the k-state fans and say oh it was just the schedule you guys aren't back like lance lance tricked you blah 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 like well, i don't think that's gonna happen but uh, that's the scary part is if we get smoked here and then and then don't show up in a bowl game. So my yeah. uh, my expectation is just play good football. I want to see Kotal Nicky and Jalen back to where they were early in the year. Um, and so yeah, that's all yeah. I want. Just don't get freaking embarrassed. But yeah, if, go ahead, AB. Oh, well, I was just gonna answer the same question. Like if if it's competitive and KU legitimately has the chance to win in the second half. And it's not just like, oh, if we get a score here and a stop here and another score here and another stop here, we'll have a chance. Like if it's like yeah. a six point game with eight minutes to go, that would be yeah. a success in my eyes. Cover or yeah. not. Like at that point, you could still yeah. lose by 13. But I just don't yeah. want it to be over midway through the second quarter like we've kind of gotten used to the last few years. And that's kind of what I'm thinking, too, is where where would our heads be at if we didn't get blown out against Texas this Saturday? Because, Ryan, you said it against Tech, like – you're right. That performance was not great, but also we had the ball late down eight and Jason beat. Yeah. We had the ball with like what? Yeah. Five minutes or so. We were down eight, one score. He fumbles. So we had a chance to win. Like where would our heads be at if maybe we won that game and we competed against Texas? Like, I feel like we could go into Manhattan with obviously way more hope and maybe a chance to beat them and spoil their chances. But now you mean, AB, off- AB, AB would have fired off a tweet that we were winning 31 11 by now. Like if we would have uh, competed against Texas last week, <laughs> <laughs> but so, also I want to say, can we please just get out to maybe even a decent start on the road? Yeah, just in general, it'd be or awesome. in general. I mean, yeah. Oklahoma state was fine. Also, we got stepped at the one a couple times Duke game the same, but Texas Tech, they come out just doing whatever they want on offense. Baylor, 28-3. Oklahoma, 1,700 yards in one game. Te- Houston, you're down 14-0. West Virginia, you're down 14-0. 28-14, 35-21. Just get out yeah. to a decent start on the road. Like, even Texas this weekend, Texas comes out with the ball. They take the ball. First off, they win mm-hmm. the toss and take the ball. And we stop them. 
get the yeah. ball back. Skinner's wide open. You hit Skinner there. It's 7-0. Maybe the game's completely different. I'm not saying we would have won the damn game, but you get out yeah. to a 7-0 lead. You have the ball at half. That The whole game changes. The crowd is in the game. The place would have been juiced. I just want to get out to a decent start. Like Maybe yeah. go up 7-0 against K-State. Maybe. 7-0 yeah. against K-State. Put a little shock Can't in them. Get their, get their bungholes a little tight to maybe yeah. not play in a Big 12 championship game like I feel like K-State yeah. could get maybe get a little tight down 7-0 against their biggest rival. That All the pressure's on K-State Saturday. There's zero pressure on KU. Yeah. That's all I can really think of. But Come out. There's like a coin flip chance that it means nothing to either team, too. If Baylor beats Texas, then it's just like, yeah. well, but we're not can't. assuming that, A.B., positive vibes. But it's bragging rights. It's a rivalry game, so. Yeah. We all haven't right. beat them since 08 or whatever it is, like. K State, that would, we'd still have so much fun on Twitter and social media if KU found a way to win this game. Oh my God! Whether it's bit, these, they get to the Big Twelve title or not, these are just not the vibes I expected headed into K State. Like you take us back to Week Five, telling me that we could be this unconfident and this even after Oklahoma State. Yeah, but whatever. Like I said, it may be better that we're kind of floating in under the radar. K State's riding high. Climbing's oh. got. Dollar oh signs in his this. eyes with Nebraska. Climbing's agents in his ear, like you, you know what Nebraska will pay. Hey, could be the perfect storm, boys. But all right, <laughs> we planned on talking a lot more hoops, but we still got to because it's feast week. I freaking love oh. feast week. It's some of my. I mean, legitimately, you take away Big Twelve cha- or conference championship week, and you take away NCAA tournament. Feast week's best week of the year, in my opinion. Um, and the Hawks are in kind of, a, I don't know, I kind of felt like Battle for Atlantis is kind of a lame field, right? I know we could play Tennessee in the title game, and Tennessee lost already, so it's kind of ruined there. But, like, we might play Dayton again in the second round, and then that leads up to us playing Tennessee in the title game. We have NC State, who, I mean, I think they'll be decent. Uh, I don't know. I'm not loving our tournament, but there's definitely some other – some fun college hoops games going on. I mean, Creighton out Arkansas is playing right now. I don't even know how that game ended, but I don't know. Uh, I'm excited. We have NC state tomorrow after an absolute stinker of a performance on Friday night against Southern Utah, who, by the way, if they're a 15 seed on your bracket, oh, you're fucked. Absolutely <laughs> yeah. fucked. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, they were pesky. It's just one of those games where you think you're going to pull away all second half and then, you just keep an underdog around, get their hopes up, and they're hanging around, making shots, getting offensive rebounds, finishing around yeah. the rim. And I mean, it's a tight game with a couple minutes left. Like we got up I mean, seven, we up one. I think we got like... up seven, and we went on a little run where we went up seven. I was like, okay, hell yeah, let's pull it. And then they get it to one so quick. Yeah. I was like, yeah. oh my god, we might. We were twenty-one point favorites. I thought that spread was pretty crazy. Just looking at Southern Utah's history this year, but. Yeah. So Jalen Wilson, pretty good, which not getting national player of the year talk yet. And I don't know if he has a big week this week. I I think, yeah, that's fine. But I think he needs to start leaking it. I mean, he's averaging what? 22 and 10. 20. Right. It might be more. I think it's like 25, 10 and five or something crazy. Yeah. I think he's averaging 25 after he had 33. I guess he did just have 33. I forgot. I mean, because he had what, how many games have we played now? Four? Yeah, he had he had 25 against Duke, 33 against Southern Utah, and then, I mean, he hasn't had a bad game yet. I think North yeah. Dakota State and Omaha, he had 20-plus or whatever he had. So, 24.5 points, 9.3 rebounds, 4.3 assists with a steal on top. So 25 and 9. Game. Yeah. Yeah. And four Pretty assists, good. which I don't think should be slept on either. Yeah. That will play. Um. So, I don't know. I'm pumped for Feast Week, pumped for this week. And I don't know. We we talked before this that I wanted to just get on here and talk about some of our favorite Feast Week moments. Because, like, when you watch the Maui, you think back. Like, the one that now stands out in my head is that Dayton champ. We play Dayton a lot in these tournaments as I'm thinking about this. That Dayton-Maui championship game, which I like to say was the 2020 national championship game. We just didn't know it at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, Was one of the more electric basketball games you've ever seen. Something about the Maui holds, what, 
1,200 people, 22. I can't I think I heard 2,500 last night. Okay. Yeah. But that I mean, still seems big. Just jam packed. Bill Walton. Hey, B turn. Have you, I think you've been, have you been in that gym? Yeah. I went, like that, I went that year. It's like degrees, right? You I don't remember in... us trying to call them and from the studio on like the day before Thanksgiving or the morning <laughs> of Thanksgiving or something trying to get a hold of them? No. <laughs> Uh, no. Yeah, I was there because freaking Anthony Edwards was there. Um, there's a dude that was there for Virginia Tech that is there now playing for um, who the hell Cincinnati. Um, and then yeah, Ku was there. Obi Top. I had no. I didn't even know who Obi Toppin was. And then he, he went off that, that first game. Turned around and stared at our bench. It was the sick. I was like, oh my god. That's yeah, and that, I remember we were up three late, and we were debating if Bill should have fouled or not. They hit a three to go to OT. Doke had some breakaway dunks, which were <laughs> hilarious. Doke was so good out there. Yeah, we – man, that team was good defensively. But I'm trying to think of other Feast Week moments. Obviously, sad one was uh, Tyler Thornton in oh. Maui when our boy Ty had 12 turnovers and was getting death threats on Twitter on his way Biggest. back. Someone told him they they hoped our plane crashed on the way back. Yeah, I remember when he said that. Oh, he's yeah, that game oh, <laughs> had me so mad. T. Rob played so freaking good. Um, Justin Wesley was getting a lot of minutes out there. Will yeah. Chamberlain. What did you have written down, Ab? Uh, do you want me to fire through them all really quick? Start with one. 2018. 2019 season um when we played tennessee i don't even know if it was a tournament or just a single game oh yeah it was, a tournament. But it was we, like two we, versus five it was before dope got hurt and it went to we, overtime it was we awesome. played a we played a lot of really good teams that tournament i think we played marquette who had Mar- marcus yeah, howard and right, we played yeah. we played a ton of ranked teams to just start the year mm-hmm. I forget who else we played it. Did we play, State. who else Michigan did we State. play in that tournament i think that was it was I think it was Brooklyn? just a four teamer. Yeah, I think no, we I just played Marquette him. and then Tennessee. And like that's what's so wild about that team. They had a like three, four week stretch where they were the best team. I guess Duke had Zion, but I mean, we were so good. And then now you look back on that team as like, I mean, yeah. they lost the streak. Like the worst team, <laughs> one of the worst teams both subs ever had, but strictly because of the, the Doke injury. But yeah, that team was fun. That game I do forget about. You know, another game. That I forget about. And I don't even know if you guys remember this, but can I try and guess? Remember... Yes. KU, Michigan State, <laughs> and Orlando in like 2014. Oh, the Spee, 15 year old Spee game. Yeah. But no, the game I'm thinking of, it would have been 2010. It's fresh off the Northern Iowa loss. We're back. It's the Morris Twins. It's their team now. And we played Arizona and Derek Williams in Las Vegas. And it was like an electric game, and the Morris Twins were incredible. And I just remember coming away from that game being like, is this team better than the Sharon Cole team? Like, Because the expectations were not there, right? T- uh, K-State was ranked higher than us to start that season. Jacob Poland's on Sports Illustrated. We were like preseason seven. We just choked in Northern Iowa. We're getting all the jokes. And I just remember that Arizona game in Las Vegas, which I don't know why I just love this game. I always think about it. It was awesome. Eric Williams was electric. Yeah. Um, so that's a random one. That would have been an incredible guess. The Michigan State one was a good guess. What else do you have, AB? Um, I put 2015 Maui just because we won, but that tournament was a snooze fest. Beat like Vandy in the beat finals Purdue? or something. Maybe. Played I know we beat Purdue. Vandy at the end. but Oh, it was Vandy. Oh, I think was, it was, that was, was when it Wayne Chaminade, was going off, right? UCLA, and... Yeah, it was. We, Sun went off. We just annihilated UCLA. Yeah, like by 40. Yeah. That's yeah. another um, team we don't talk about was such a legit national title contender. 2016. Like I, just, I feel like we maybe it was because Perry was just like – Perry was our best player, but I feel like people around the country never really believed the hype with him. Dude, like we he, was were just, the he was such a quiet one guy. one overall seed, and it wasn't even close. Like mm-hmm. we dominated they here with like season. 18 straight wins. I know. Yeah, they so, lost three out of five, and then just one out. It was Frank Devonte Wayne, who Wayne was freaking good that year, especially in that tournament. Mm-hmm. Like I remember being nervous for that Maryland game in that tournament, mm-hmm. and Wayne was damn yeah. good. Perry was just freaking phenomenal all year until that one game. Whatever, mm-hmm. whatever. Villanova's code new coach is not good. Yeah, we beat we beat, we beat UCLA. We beat Shamanad one hundred twenty three to seventy two. 
Mm. And then UCLA 92-73, Vandy was ranked. We beat them 70-63. to What a year that was. OU and Triple OT. Yeah. Man, we could have won it. I got two more if you guys want them. Um, First one's quick, just to say it, because we hate them. Uh, Last time we were at Battle for Atlanta, it's losing to Villanova, DiVincenzo. Or no, it wasn't DiVincenzo. It was RG Diacono. Yeah. Game winners. Italian Wiggins league. and those Wiggins. dudes, we were so hyped because yeah. we beat Duke and we jumped up to like number two in the country and just awful. We almost turned around and lost the next day to UTEP. UTEP. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. David Latin was bad. playing. David Latin yeah. and uh, Bobby Joe Big Hill. Daddy D. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then I last mean, one, wouldn't be able to get out of here without the Florida game in Vegas. And oh, oh, that's seven. probably oh, that's one. That, that oh, probably is the best one. Yeah. That has to be one, dude. Mm-hmm. I just it had him in sneaky. like from recent to past, but Lee. Yeah. What I sneaky Corey, love, yeah. Corey, Corey what I love Burr. saying about that game. Sorry, I keep interrupting He's you. Dancing around each that. other. When, when, like you bring up who was better, 08 Kansas or or 07 Florida. Like when you see people rank national champions, I love being like, well, I mean, 07 Kansas beat that Florida team, and then 08 Kansas was even better than 07 Kansas and went on to win the title. So I think Kansas is better. It's just the dumbest argument ever, but I see it all the time on Twitter, and I love it. So I love that we won that game. That was a game we had lost to freaking Oral Roberts and turned around and beat Florida, number one defending champs in Vegas. Just that game was Terrell so Arthur good. was incredible as a freshman. Julian. Um, yeah, Julian wasn't that was where like Julian. Jake Knight, Damn it, Julian. Oh god, I'm gonna watch that game on YouTube. Tonight. Are you serious? Yeah, that was that's yeah, a Corey game. Brewer, Joe Joe Kim Noah, Al Horford. They had that white boy Lee Humphreys. Like they were stacked, and we were, were so obviously good. really good. B Rush, Chalmers, Shady, Julian, Russell. That I probably is one Dayton too for me. Yeah. Maui's just different, though. Like, I, I feel like that Florida game, it was awesome and it was cool, but it wasn't really a tournament, was it? It was just kind of like Florida a was just so it was just It was a horrible tournament yeah. to set up KU Florida. I think we but, played Ball State in semis, which people forget KU lost to Ball State in the Maui one year in like 02, yeah. 01. Sure. I cut off my looking at preseason tournaments at uh, the Bill Self era when we were talking about this. So. I remember being very upset. Back that as far. I think that I think that was the Maui. I'd have to look, but there, yeah. there's yeah. just something about winning three games in three days in that gym, though, that kind of puts oh, Maui yeah. ahead. Like that, and that Dayton game was so sick. I don't remember it much was. at all from it. I just remember it being sick. I just, just think back Florida and just had yeah. legends. Yeah, like the, the, like Billy, the teams Billy Donovan for sure. herself and Joe Kim Noah Horford. We had a bunch yeah. of pros, obviously, but Joe that Kim matchup was, a, was just crazy. He's a top ten player of all time in my mind. Joe Kim. No, all time. <laughs> Especially from the from a shooter so, standpoint. He's an all pro so defense player of the year. I mean let's on. talk. What's the line tomorrow, K U N C State? I know nothing um, about NC State. Eight and a half. Boys, I might have a hammer. Remember three or four years ago when we'd always bring the hammer home? <laughs> yeah. Hammer the Hawks. Let me, let me tell you a few things about tomorrow's game. I listened to Bill Self sell, uh, presser earlier today. He said the kids are allowed to have fun today, but once the games yeah. start tomorrow, probably not as much. So I assume that's pretty standard around for everyone else. Both teams can have fun today, maybe have some fun tonight. Games at 11 o'clock in the morning tomorrow in a weird ass ballroom, and the total's but- 150. Give me on like first half under 73, if that's what it is. 72. Two good deep. I know both teams play fast on Kim Palm. I get it, but that gym is weird. Shots to me never feel like they fall. It's a it's weird like environment, dark. weird time. It's like 11 a.m. body clock for KU, noon body clock for NC State on a Wednesday, and you're in the Bahamas and you're like trying to get started. It just feels like a spot where it's going to be 31 29 at halftime. Yeah. No one loves uh, 11 a.m. unders more than Anthony Bax. He will take the under in any tournament, any conference tournament, the first game of March Madness. Yes. It's he caused some, it. some friendships to have. Like, remember when Drew jinxed it for us in 2018, 2019 <laughs> tournament? There were seven points in 15 minutes, and then there were 60 in the next five. <laughs> there was no um, chance we lost that what game. What did he say? Oh, you've got this bet one or something. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Speaking of unders, last night I took the under in that Arizona game. It was 160. <laughs> it's seven. The it's, second half was insane. I've never seen that in my entire <laughs> life. I don't know if you Dude. saw that, right? I didn't even care. It was AB amazing. texted that he was, was like, 40, Arizona is so good. It was 40 to 30 at half. So I had 90 to spare in the second half. So I didn't even really watch. I turned like just because I don't even really care if I lose anymore. It's almost comical to me, but. I turned the TV on, like just I knew the game had been going with 11 minutes. It was already at 1.30. I look mm-hmm. at my phone. Both teams had 29 each. Nine minutes into the second half, they both scored 60. They scored 120 combined in the second half. No, no, <laughs> no fouls, not extending the game. I've never seen It was seen so insane. I have never seen close score? to 120. 101.93. I've never seen By the seen... way, re- rest in peace to Arizona minus nine betters last night because they're up by 18 with a minute and a half Ryan. left. And the, the, uh, what's the, was it since he, since he walk ons hit like every shot they took? Oh, Ryan, 10 0 run to finish not the game. Possible. That's why dude, they were up 18 with a minute 20 left. It shouldn't be mathematically possible. Like, there's a minute and 20 left, and you're up 18. You're holding the ball for 30 <laughs> seconds. There should have been two, maybe three possessions. And they hit, like, four threes in a row. It was crazy. Can you imagine you guys watching hear about that? Like, you're celebrating a dub. At, like, one in the morning. You want to hear about a really dumb couple bets I made? I uh, I bet Kentucky money line against oh, Gonzaga boy. and then chased and bet Kentucky plus 15 and a half. They had it to four. Um, and Rasir Bolton or whatever his name hit a shot, and Gonzaga won by 16. Just like a late in the shot clock, they were close to dribbling it out and just pulled up for three. It was, I deserved it. You can't, you Kentucky stinks, by the way. We don't have to go down a a, a rant on Kentucky, but they stink. They're not especially, good. especially when Sunday's the Lord's Day and you're gambling and it's a football day. I know. And I you're was, gambling on college hoops. I just keep thinking, like, Calipari can't keep stinking this much but okay just, I, I had does. i had money on kentucky also <laughs> i liked it because <laughs> yeah whatever i'm not gonna go into a dumb brain analysis <laughs> on that but, <laughs> all right ab so my pick i i think you're right though ab i think this tournament's gonna be kind of ugly for us i think it's i i think tennessee like if i were betting if you truly had to put money on it i, I would maybe side with tennessee i feel like bill's back i think bill's gonna be you know, making a lot of like, you know, playing mental games, making examples of guys. I, I laughed in his presser today where he was like, yeah, I'm, when he was watching, he said he just kept saying, get him out. Like he <laughs> was clearly, I think, thought Norm maybe had too long of a leash. So I think you're going to see no. Bill put to, <laughs> potentially do a couple of things that I don't know. So I think it's a close game tomorrow. I think we win, but I'd probably take KU plus or. Uh, NC State plus eight and a half or whatever. Um, and just because it's your hammer, I'm definitely <laughs> taking the under, AB. So um, some would say since it's my hammer, you should take the over. But no, you've you've got me some winners this year. AB times. always has a nice hammer. <laughs> okay, go ahead, B turn. <laughs> um, I have it's I don't I'm, I'm freaking embarrassed to admit this, but the older I get, I swear I can't keep up. I didn't even know who we were playing tomorrow or what time. I used to be like I used to know our full schedule like before the year like every Dude, night. I used to know I would have known NC State's roster because I would have followed them as recruits and known CJ, who they were. CJ Leslie, yeah, CJ Leslie, uh, Barb Walk, Barb Anthony Barber. He started Cat, point guard. Cat Barber. Um, what was that really old uh, Hodges? He was a legend from back in the day. Yes. So I think those guys are all playing. So I'll take NC State. I don't know anything about them. Southern Utah game had me a little nervous about us from a scoring standpoint because I think we're going to have Jay Will all year. He's going to average 20, said that before the year, but Grady's obviously going to have disappointing nights. I wouldn't even say disappointing, but I think we're going to get our hopes up so much because we might rely on him to score so much that he's going to be, yeah. he's going to maybe disappear like the Duke game, even though he came up huge for us and probably won us that game. I'm just worried about other guys. I don't, Kevin McCuller's never been an elite scorer. Dewan's not really going to look to score, even though he does so many other things. I thought Uday, the first couple games of the year, I was like, dude, this Uday dude's going to be a monster. I don't know. I'm not going to give up on the dude. I just don't know where our centers are going to be late in the year. I think Zuby's made a couple mistakes. He set a bunch of illegal screens. (laughs) 
of course, freshman bigs. But I don't know. I'm a little worried about us from a scoring standpoint right now, and they didn't guard Southern Utah at all. I'm sure Bill was pretty pumped about Which that. Which I think but... helps your under bet, A.B., because Bill will be on them about defense, and I think this team can Gord! live up to that. <laughs> um, Are you guys I... – I don't know. NC State, I guess, and under because A.B.'s – hammer yeah i'm gonna i don't want to be negative but i could very much envision us losing this game Why not? do you think i think do you think the newcomers are going to play tight now that it's like their first time playing with bill in a real game do you think it has any <laughs> I mean, effect that he's back on the sideline in a negative way at first obviously it's a glaring well, positive long term but in like game one tomorrow in the environment that they're in is there any way that it's like a little bit of a letdown they're trying to do too much to impress bill well, that was kind of my that was kind of my point is they're not necessarily nervous but like they've maybe gotten a little comfortable not doing things exactly to Bill's standards mm-hmm. because I mean if they set a pick wrong tomorrow Bill will be like get him out like yep. Bill is not going to waste time so I do think there could be a mental side of it where that gets to him but I would hope they're not like I mean, they've been practicing with the guy all year. I would hope he doesn't make them that nervous. But I I do think Bill's going to be on a rampage this week with pulling guys, screaming at guys, making examples. I bet Jankovic gets big minutes this week. That would be my (laughs) prediction. But uh, so I don't know. I think it's going to be – I have no – I like I said, I think Tennessee, KU, and that if it gets to that championship game, truly I think will be a – maybe a pick them or a, a KU minus one minus two max. I don't think we'll be huge favorites. I see where the, obviously the favorites to win the tournament, but Tennessee's right there with, us, I think so. Tennessee might be favored to win They're, the whole tournament. Well, to beat us, if we play them. So Tennessee is ranked six right now in Ken Palm and KU's 11th. And there's like a pretty yeah. decent gap and it's going to be on a neutral. Yeah. So I think if they actually do go off of that, which, you know, yep. maybe Tennessee minus one. Yeah, we'll see. So, last pick, AB, just because it's you're you're a Michigan football man, Michigan man. Bah, 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 bah. Michigan plus seven and a half against Ohio State. Take Ohio. Don't trust. No. Me. I mean, just take Ohio. Give me the hook. Don't overthink. Seven and a half. Got to take the hook. Give me. <laughs> give me Michigan. Harbaugh, Kansas football head coach. People forget that. Um, I love the Wolverines. That's my analysis. Uh, no. But is Corum even playing? Boy, Corum. Because, boy, did Michigan look bad once he got hurt on offense. They couldn't do anything. I, I just seen this movie too many times. Our I know offense Michigan won last me. year. Ohio State's going to come in and win this game like 42 to 21. Also, no disrespect to your Wolverines, but I do not want to see them in the playoff again. I just don't want to. Well, see. okay. So here's my, and we're going to go macro here because I'm going to take offense to that. Because also, every, I kind of want to see year, USC in there. Every year, it doesn't electric. matter who the the four seed is. They suck ass and they lose by thirty points. And at least half of the years, the three seed loses to the two seed by a million points as well. It's just how call, and it's going to be the same this year regardless of who gets in because George is going to beat anybody in the country by two touchdowns at least. If Max Duggan plays against Georgia, he might not throw oh for God. eighty yards. Oh my God! That's why I mean I, I, of course, want a Big Twelve team to make it. Like I want TCU to make it very badly, but I think a USC Georgia matchup would be fun, one versus four. Um, and then who would the two three be? Ohio State, Michigan, run it back. Right now, the playoff yeah. picture is wild. Like, yeah. but honestly, like who else hops in? I let's use it five right now. They would have to have obviously win out, beat Georgia in the SEC title game. I think KU puts a good good performance out on Saturday. They might sneak into that top five. Did you see the proposed um, to three. 12-game bracket this afternoon? Someone tweeted. It just uh-huh. looked very appealing. Uh, that's, that's And I've always been pro expand the playoff, not because we're going to get like – it's not going to change the champion. Like an 11 seed isn't going to come out and win. It's still going to be one or two seed, Alabama, Georgia, Clemson, yeah. whoever. But like at the end of the day, it's December twelfth, and we've got number five versus number twelve, a non-con in number Nobody's five gonna stadium. Be mad. Oh, Which, it's going to be the best, yeah, and the it's going to be four games that like it's going to be awesome. The five. Yeah. So this was just a bracket from someone. I don't know if this is what it would. Uh, yeah, this is probably what it would be. Actually, I think K State got in as the twelve, right, or the twelfth in the yeah, standings. Maybe I think I don't know. But regardless, this had Michigan playing Tulane, which is two really good defenses. 
um, Alabama, Tennessee in the first round, which was an amazing uh, matchup in Knoxville. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> um, Clemson, oh, Oregon would be fun. Two really good programs. Bo Nix, really good. Um, obviously, landing up at Oregon, Kirby um, – what's his nuts, Dabo for Clemson. So it'd be a good coaching matchup, two really good programs. I just think I'm sick of seeing the same teams. I'd love to see other teams get a shot, especially the like non-power fives, just because people have made cases for them in the past. So it'd kind of be nice to see them in there and see what happened, see if they got shit pumped or not. But I don't know. It'd be fun to see it expanded. Once it happens. If K-State made a college football playoff appearance, we wouldn't hear the end of it. Yeah. they won't when that time comes they will choke i don't know but i was only <laughs> laughing i wasn't laughing at you b turn but i was just thinking back to that kid that we used to watch on youtube that would create a new bracket every day oh. and then predict the bracket a fake bracket which is essentially what we were like you were just giving analysis on games oh. that aren't <laughs> Speaking of filling out brackets that'll list. never exist, did you guys see Lenardi's bracket yesterday? Oh, no. Are we a one North, seed? We were a two seed in KC. It was North Carolina as the one, KU as the two. I think. Forgot about the Midwest. I think wow. Kentucky and UCLA. People it was like forget. four like absolute blue bloods. In the, like, if, you know, the, the higher seeds advance every time. People forget Kansas could get KC this year and. Last that time that happened, so we took well advantage. Last time? Yeah, that was awesome. My favorite game in KU history. And also, so, we, all right. Yeah, we need to wrap it up. <laughs> yeah, we're wrapping up. Fun episode. Hour 10. Um, yes, Lance is staying, and Feast Week is here. So uh, we'll be back next week to hopefully recap uh, a good football weekend and good basketball weekend. But we will see. Thank you, as always, for listening. Rock Chalk. <laughs>